Intermotor Track Test, where we take the latest and greatest performance cars to the limit at the challenging Bryant Park hill climb circuit. We'll do a deep dive on the car's dynamics, try the different drive modes, and then wrap it up with a track score. Today's track test is going to be loud and probably quite oversteery as it features the 750 horsepower RTR Ford Mustang. If that sounds like your sort of thing, then like the video, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment with any cars you want to see us track test. I'll run you through the specs of this beast, take it for a spin and then attempt a lap time. So hit the time codes below if you want to skip ahead. To be honest though, RTR themselves say that lap times aren't the point of this car. RTR even has its own hashtag, Fun Haver, and this car is basically set up to go sideways. That's because RTR, which stands for Ready to Rock, was started by Formula Drift Champion Vaughan Gittin Jr. And the gear is now exclusively available in Australia through Mustang Motorsport. You can get a basic Spec 1, which adds springs, wheels, and a body kit. But this car is Spec 3, which means it has the works. Spec 2 is all the chassis gear, including adjustable shocks and sway bars, lowered springs, 20-inch wheels, a full body kit, and a plaque signed by Gittin Jr. himself. This will set you back $19,500, but if you want the full enchilada, then another $21,500 gets you this. Spec 3 adds a Roush supercharger to the 5 litre V8, lifting outputs to 559 kilowatts and 908 newton meters, matched here to a 10 speed automatic. And that sounds pretty fun to me. <laughs> well, well, well. Okay, so before we get into the fun having, let's talk about the serious stuff. Well, try to talk about the serious stuff anyway. Let's go through the car bit by bit. If you can hear me over the V8 racket. <laughs> and let's start with this engine because it's kind of dominating proceedings at the moment. We've got 559 kilowatts, 908 newton meters or 750 horsepower in the old money. I'll just try and quieten it down a bit. It's bloody loud. It makes a very, very good noise. Okay, so when Ford updated the V8 in the Mustang in 2018, they did an amazing job of getting more power out of it. They screwed, what, 339 kilowatts out of it, out of an Atmo engine, but they've also made it really, really hard to modify. Talk to enough tuners now about this thing that, um, yeah, it's very, very complex, partly because it's high, so highly strung. Really high compression ratio, sort of 3D fuel maps and high technology. All these um, protections on it to keep itself cool and get the durability out of the engine. And it must be said that the early examples, early modified examples of that engine were pretty ropey. They would break down under load, they'd be hesitant under throttle, the throttle response was really lazy. But, I've got to say, now that we're up to, I'm not sure what iteration we're up to of this Roush supercharger kit, it's really good, really good. Like, let's come out of this last corner, this tight corner in third gear, 3,000 RPM, feed the throttle in, I've got good throttle response. Revs cleanly, takes off all the way to, I didn't quite get to 7,000 RPM then because we were going at an almighty rate of knots. So, I'd say they've nailed it, <laughs> this car's fast. And that's the thing, it's, it's one thing to get the massive power out of it. Like, I'm not gonna say anyone can get massive power out of it, but you know, it's not a dyno queen. The hard part is getting the throttle response, the part throttle response, to make sure that the thing's drivable. And this is really good, really drivable. I can feed the throttle in, it's got a nice power curve in it. Heaps of torque, obviously, but the harder I rev it, the more power I get. Oh <laughs> man, this car's fast. Oh, what a noise too. In this car, we've got 10 speed automatic gearbox, which works pretty well. It's not really a track gearbox. I've got it in manual at the moment and just kind of leaving it in third because it's got so much horsepower and so much torque that changing gear is a little bit redundant. Quick on the upshifts. 
it is pretty responsive on the downshifts, but we'll see how we go when we go for a lap time. Having 10 gears and this much horsepower means you're almost spoiled for choice. You've almost got too many options. So let's see how we go when we lift the pace. Now, obviously this car isn't all about horsepower. This is the Spec 3, so it does have the supercharged kit on it, but the Spec 2 is all about the chassis. So we've got these lowered springs, we've got the new dampers, which are basically the stock dampers, but they've been revalved, and they've also got the adjustability in them now. And we've also got adjustable sway bars. Now this car is apparently set up to RTR's own specs, which is for a bit of oversteer. So that sounds quite fun. Again, at the moment, I've actually got it in racetrack mode, which is the sports ESP setting. And this isn't an RTR thing, but it's a Mustang thing, but the sports ESP setting in the latest Mustangs is really, really good, really good. For fast track driving, it'll let you slide the car like that. It'll let you get the tail out. It'll let you use plenty of the performance, but also just keeps an eye on proceedings to make sure you don't get too out of hand which is always welcome when you've got this much grunt to play with. But as good as that ESP Sport is, this is the fun haver. So let's get rid of the electronics and see if we can do a bit of a Vaughan Gittin Jr. emulation. say though before I start flinging this thing around it's actually got a really nice feel to it the steering in particular feels really really accurate sometimes Mustangs can feel a little bit sort of doughy around the straight ahead but there's a really nice feel a really nice accuracy to the steering as soon as I turn the wheel I've got a response and I've got a reasonable amount of feedback as to what's going on it's got a really good front end on it I can gently push it into understeer know exactly how much slide the front tyres have got and then use the throttle to unleash hell. Normally the Spec 2 package would have 305s on the back for greater traction. This car is actually square all around, it's got two 7530s. So we don't probably have quite as much traction as we would normally. Oh, this car is so, so predictable. Wowee. Okay. The diff could be a bit tighter, but you know, that's a stock diff dealing with almost 750 horsepower. So, there we go. Wee. <laughs> slides into oversteer so easily. Oh, it's got some grunt too. Just pick it up over. There we go, even over this top corner. Woo! Oh, I love the handling of this thing. So as I mentioned, RTR aren't really going for lap times. They're going for fun. And that's to do with making a car predictable and easy to slide. And I'd say they've absolutely nailed it because this thing is an absolute breeze. This might be one of the easiest cars to slide I've ever driven. Holy moly, this thing, the rear just sort of arcs gently wide. There we go, just trail it on the brake, give it a bit of throttle, round it goes, plenty of angle, back the other way. Heaps of grunt, oh! I think I love this car. It's, it's just, I can't believe how easy it is to slide. It's so predictable in its responses and its behavior. Like this is a mega horsepower car on a pretty hairy track. It's not a lot of room to go wrong here, but it's just a piece of cake. I feel totally at ease and totally confident in just sliding around. I can pick the angle I want. I want a little bit of angle, a bit more angle, flick it back the other way and back the other way. I've got the throttle response as well. If you want to do what I want, I can even Scandinavian flick it a bit, like that. Woo -hee -hee. <laughs> I'm trying to be light on the throttle because I don't want to churn through all the tyres. 
in a matter of moments, but that's hard work because this thing is a barrel of laughs. RTR improved the handling. This car's got communication, it's got accuracy, it's got great balance. The supercharger kit obviously has heaps of grunt, but it's also got progression. But if RTR's goal was to make a fun machine, then they have absolutely succeeded because this thing is absolutely fun with a capital F. <laughs> Alright, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go have some more fun. Alright, let's stick the helmet on, start the stopwatch, and I'll attempt to keep this thing in a straight line. The RTR Mustang is a wild ride, wheel spinning around most of the lap, but it's talented enough to set a best lap time of 1.06 dead, almost a second quicker than the likes of the Audi RS5 and Lexus RCF Track Edition. Lap time might not be the RTR Mustang's main priority, but it's still pretty damn quick. That it could achieve that time is a credit to its chassis setup, which gave me plenty of confidence to push hard even with all that power could just use a little more cooling to sustain that level of engine performance. In terms of its main priority though, having fun, it's arguably even better. It's just such an easy car to drive on or over the limit, which is why it gets a track score of 8.5 out of 10.